And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. Governor Katie Hobbs has already set a record for the number of vetoes in a legislative session, but now lawmakers are poised to override one of those vetoes, something they haven't done since Bruce Babbitt was governor. And joining us now to talk about that, Republican political consultant Marcus Delartino and former Democratic lawmaker Reginald Bolding. Thank you both for being here. And Marcus, Bruce Babbitt goes back before your time, my time, Reginald's time. <laughs> Maybe your time. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So <laughs> There you go. You're really aging yourself there. <laughs> yeah, I did. So, so what is going on? A little background. And so, it, it was a, a veto over a cottage food bill that would have allowed st street vendors to make food at home, like tamales, tacos, other things, and sell them on the street without really worried of, 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 of getting fined and, or, or worse. Um, the governor said she was worried about uh, foodborne illnesses in her veto letter, but this was a bill that got like three-fourths support from Democrats and Republicans at the legislature. Um, was this a massive miscalculation on the governor's part? I don't think it was a miscalculation. I think, uh, I think this issue became a hot tamale. Uh, no wow. Pun intended. But wow. um, I, here's what's going to happen, Dennis, because I've been through one of these before. And, you know, the governor's burning up the phone lines and, and legislative leadership's burning up the phone lines. I'm sure that they think they have a two-thirds right now. But by the, end of this, by the end of the weekend and going into Monday, I think the Democrats will say, you know what, we got a lot of bills going up there. we got a lot of things that the governor might put in the budget. Um, we are going to take a different path here and maybe find a striker uh, that we can stick it on or a vehicle bill that we can amend something on, make it a little bit different, tweak it a little bit, yeah. and send that up. And it will be a success. Yeah, that's that, that's what I've been hearing from Democrats. What have you been hearing? Because I've been hearing something similar to that, that, that they, they want to help the governor save face on this. Well, I think what's going to happen is that, you know, you're gonna, definitely going to see either a, a new bill or new language or something of that nature. I don't believe it's going to be a, an override. Uh, you know, one of the things that is extremely important, though, is that the sponsor of the bill, you know, there was outreach by the Department of Health. There was outreach by, Den uh, by Democratic leadership to try to amend some of those concerns mm -hmm. uh, that people had on the bill. Uh, he did not want to have any amendments on that bill. And I think ultimately the plan and the goal was to, to create a veto bait uh, for the governor. And <laughs> I think that's essentially what happened. So, so they were trying to create veto bait. Uh, you know, so the reality is, if you look at the legislature right now, is that the bills that they're sending the governor, uh, many of them they know have no way that they're going to pass. There's still about 50 additional bills that the governor absolutely will not sign. So I, I think we may be halfway to the point of this record breaking that we've seen. I mean, well, you know, it's going to be a lot more bills. Uh, but the reality is, is this bill is a little to do with nothing. And I think it's an opportunity to try to show a wedge within the Democrats and the governor. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've heard that too. Uh, it was a lot to do really about nothing when you start looking at a bill like this. What do you think, Marcus? Why is this a big deal? Well, I, I keep coming back to this point. I am unaware of, and, and admittedly it may be happening, of a bunch of tamale makers being hauled into jail for making tamales at home. So I'm not too sure this is as big of an issue uh, as, as is proclaimed. But that being said, the law is the law. And sometimes we like to clean these things up. And this was certainly a case where people wanted to give a little bit more economic freedom to those people at home who want to make a little extra cash on the side, making whatever it is at home. And also kind of vouch for that. I, would, I reached out to the county during the week to find out how many people, you know, it, it been, you know there had been enforcement on, this, on these statutes and the, they didn't have those numbers readily available. So we'll wait and see if we get any of that. Now I want to kind of turn our attention because another big issue at the legislature, got a couple of seats to fill. Raquel Tehran um, had stepped down to focus on her run for uh, for Congress, um, and but Liz Harris, they got to fill her seat because they recently kicked out Liz Harris. They voted to boot her um, for ethics violations. Um, there was a meeting this past week in Chandler to pick three potential nominees to fill her seat. Those names will be forwarded to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. One of those names to replace Liz Harris is Liz Harris. Uh, what do you see happening here? Uh, what kind of message the Republicans down in Chandler sending uh, to, 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 the, to the public with this? Well, I, I think it's clear that Liz Harris has no shot of being, you know, mm -hmm. reappoint, or being appointed to, to the seat that she was just expelled from. Uh, but the question is, whoever is appointed, you know, I, it's going to be interesting to see how they actually maneuver within the Republican caucus at the legislature. Because when you looked at the PC's vote, Liz Harris, she won by a, a wide margin of, you know, being those, you know, 
three that were selected. So I, I imagine, you know, she'll run again in 24. We'll be a strong competitor in that district and amongst the primary, and, you know, we'll see what happens. And the odds-on favorite for, uh, for, to, to get that nomination from the county board of supervisors is Julie Willoughby, who narrowly lost her bid last year uh, to, for that seat anyway. What's the thinking going on right now in Maricopa County? Because Liz Harris was one of the top, uh, you know, election deniers in the state. This county B board of supervisors has no appetite for that kind of candidate. Um, how are how are they viewing that these three names, including Liz Harris, uh, Julie Willoughby, and the other candidate? How are they looking at them right now? Well, I would disagree that Julie Willoughby is the odds-on favorite. First of all, I don't think the board has. Uh, picked a, even has a leaning at this point. Everybody has an equal shot, including Liz Harris. Um, and so to that extent, I would tell you that the field's wide open. I don't, I, the board has signaled they're going to take their time. They're going to do background checks. They're going to do interviews. I don't, I have literally no clue. There's, it's a difficult choice for them. I just, be, I just want to be clear that Marcus Delartino is saying that Liz Harris has a shot at this. I would argue she does. There is a political calculus where it makes some sense. I won't reveal what that is, but there is a political calculus. Yeah, okay, you're not going <laughs> to reveal the political calculus. I can't tell you everything. You, I mean, that's I mean, why we bring you on the show to tell us everything, Marcus. <laughs> So there's another seat that's been open. Raquel Tehran, obviously, I mentioned before, should step down to go focus yeah. on her run for Congress. What's going to happen there? Well, you know, you have uh, both of the sitting representatives who uh, are in the, in the House. They both are part of the list. And then you have a, a, a Reverend Quance Cruz, who's also part of the mix there. Uh, I mean, I, w we'll see. I think all three are really, really solid um, uh, selections. And, and, and I hope that, you know, all three eventually represent the district. I, you know, I, I think Reverend Cruz has a great shot and along with the, the other two. So the question is whether or not the board wants to come back and reappoint uh, for the House, which I don't know if they want to do or not. All right, we're going to have to end it right there. That is all the time we have. Be sure to join us next week for more Politics Unplugged. Good night.